Okay, so this is SparkFun's bli binary, binary blaster kit as it arrives in the mail. And what you do is you just cut with a knife here where the tape is, open this up, you just have this red paper wrapped here, open that up and you have this little smaller box. So the rest of this is just, uh, I guess, to keep it safe, keep the components safe. So this you don't need anymore, just put it aside, and how you have this smaller box here, open this up, and this you have this uh, protective cardboard stuff covering it, and then underneath that you have the, this is styrofoam with components pressed into it, I don't know if it's styrofoam, what you would call that stuff. These look like, these are the push buttons, here is the printed circuit board, and it has writing on it, so it says how to play on the Mac. Here it says sparkfun.com, binary blaster, watch the notch. Okay, so that's, I guess, for in uh, installing the integrated circuit. Um, and it has two batteries. So I am going to put this box aside. Notice that there are no printed directions. So what I did was I just went on Google and I searched for SparkFun Binary Blaster and one of the first hits were the directions for how to put this thing together. So I am going to switch. I'm going to, well first I'm going to get my soldering iron ready. I got my, oh I should go get this with water. Um, I'm going to plug in my soldering iron. Okay, so that's plugged in. I'm going to get my protective safety goggles ready. So those are ready. Anything else I need? Oh, I need solder. I need solder. And I think I need cutters. That's something else they said. I needed. So I've got my cutters. I've got all my tools right here uh, underneath this table, so it's very convenient to get everything set up. It's very important to be able to solder stuff uh, to get it set up quickly. This is desoldering wire, so it sucks up the uh, solder. If you touch it with the solder, and all the solder goes onto this stuff. Um, so let me go put water on the sponge. I'll be right back. done. So now I'm going to switch to my computer so you can read the instructions along with me. Switch here. Switch here. So I just searched on Google, SparkFun Binary Blaster, and the second hit. The first hit was the kit itself. The second hit was the assembly guide. So here we go. Here are the instructions. First, instru first page is just like an overview. It tells you what tools you need. <laughs> tells you other readings you can do, and then there's this big red button where you can start the next page and start the actual instructions. So now it explains how to find the first resistor you need. So um, you're looking for brown, black, orange, gold, and the links to another tutorial where you can learn more about resistors. I already know about how that works. And then it points to where you look on the board for that resistor. You put it in, so I've already kind of done this stuff, you bend it out, solder it, done that, I've already done this stuff. Well, I'll just read it again, just to be careful. The board over, hold the soldering iron sweet spot, so it touches both the leg and the metal ring. I've done that for a sec. I've done that, hold it for two seconds, I've done that. Feed solder into the joint, I know that. Pull away the solder, I know that. Then pull away the iron. I think I know that. Well, I don't, I don't know if I remember those that order. Pull away the solder first, then the iron. 
I don't, I'm not sure if I do that. Clip off any excess legs. Okay, so I'll switch back to the uh, camera. There we go. So I believe the resistor is going to be in here. Yep, here we go. So looks like this is not a zipper bag. It's just like a sealed bag. So I'm just going to cut it with wire cutters and open that. Peel it open. Okay, so we've got this foam that has stuff stuck into it on both sides, actually. Yeah, it's got a whole bunch of stuff stuck into it on both sides. So here we've got two little capacitors, we've got a resistor, we've got these four plastic things. They look like plastic guides for the screws. We've also got these four screws there. We've got an integrated circuit. We've got these metal things that I don't recognize. I'm going to guess that they are mounts for the push buttons. Not sure. Uh, and we've got these two things. I don't know what these are. Relays? Transistors? They've got three metal prongs. Don't know what this round thing is. CET 12A3.5. Don't know what that is. And then we also have on the other side, we've got these two big, what are they called? Seven segment displays. All right, so I'm going to just get started, pull out the only resistor that I see. The legs are bent of the resistor on the other end, so I'm going to unbend them so I can take them, take out, take it out. I'm just going to confirm that the colors match what I'm supposed to do. So the colors here, I do see gold, orange, black, and brown. And I'm looking for brown, black, orange, and gold. So this is the correct resistor. I'm going to stick it in the 10K slot here. So where is that? Here it is. OK. Stick it in there. OK, that's done. Pushing it flush against the board. I'm going to get put this uh, plastic aside. Metal side, put the batteries aside. Actually, I want my soldering iron to be close to my right hand. Okay, my soldering iron is hot. Put on my safety goggles. Okay. So, pushing the resistor flush up against the printed circuit board, bending the legs on the other side so that it stays in place still flush, Getting putting spare parts to the side, don't need this plastic, okay, so now I'm going to, no, I don't need this, I don't need this, get my solder ready, get my soldering iron ready, all right, so let's do this, hold it for two seconds and then push in the solder. So one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Okay, looks pretty good to me. Maybe a little bit too much, but not a big deal. Next one. One Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Looks good. All right. Okay, so that one's done. Just need to clip off the legs. Probably use just a little bit too much solder, but I think it looks good. Okay, that one's done. That one's done. Throw away these metal pieces. All right, next step. Switch back to the screen. So that one's done. Capacitors. Locate the two 0.1 microfarad capacitors. 
these look a little different from, than resistors. They have two leads that come down off the bottom of the component, and they have the markings 104 on them. Also note, the bottom side may have some other letters, like K5M. They look like this. Locate their positions on the printed circuit board. Ensure that they are flush with the surface of the printed circuit board and standing upright. Solder them into place and clip access lead length. When you're done soldering these into place, your board should look like this. All right. I think they should specify that the uh, orientation doesn't matter. That's kind of important to know. They don't really specify that. For somebody who's new, they might get, they might wonder about something like that. I'm pretty sure the orientation doesn't matter. Otherwise, I'm sure they would have specified it. Anyway, so I'm going to switch back to screen. There we go. Locate the two mic the capacitors right here. Here's one of them, and here's the other one. Find these two spots for the capacitors on the printed circuit board. Stick this one in like that. Bend the legs on the other end so it stays in place. Easy enough. All right, same drill. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Next one. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Okay. Yeah, it looks looks pretty good to me. Okay, so I'll cut these wires. Looks pretty good. All right, get rid of these excess metal bits. Next one. And over here. Then the metal legs out. Okay, very good. Same deal. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Good. Next one. Come on. Okay. One, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Very good. Looks like I'm burning the circuit board a little bit, discoloring it. But otherwise, it looks really good. Clip off the excess. Metal bits. All right, so that's that for the capacitors. Next step, let's switch back to the computer screen. Next page, microcontroller. The, I think that's the integrated circuit. Locate the microcontroller. This particular microcontroller is the is an Atmega 328. This is actually, I think, the same microcontroller used on the Arduino Uno. And I think these things cost like a dollar, two dollars, three dollars each. So they're real cheap and that's actually I think the uh, the attraction that's supposed to be the attraction of the Arduino is that you can program one of these integrated circuits and then you just pop it out of the Arduino and uh, you only need this little piece and the rest of it um, the rest of the Arduino you don't need to carry around with your your electronic circuit thing. So it says this component is polarized, which means we need to take extra care to place it in the board properly. Notice the notch. Now locate the position on the printed circuit board. 
Again, notice a similar notch symbol on the, in the printed circuit board, white ink. Taking care to align the notch properly, place the Admega 328 into the printed circuit board. While soldering the first leg, it can be any leg you choose, make sure to keep the component flush with the printed circuit board. When you are done soldering this component, the bottom of your board should look like this, a nice row of even volcanoes. All right, let's do it. Okay, so pop out the uh, integrated circuit. Pretty cool to think about the uh, brain power in this thing. This is like the brain of the whole thing. All right, so here's the uh, circuit board. There's the white symbol, and I see the little notch here. I'm gonna put it in so that it matches. And they design the holes very nicely so that they're very easy to slip in. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to bend some of these guys out a bit so that it'll hopefully stay. Oh, maybe not. Okay, yeah, it's staying in place now. So now just solder. Man, it's a lot of things to solder. All right, let's do it. I don't know if I've ever soldered a micro thing that had this many connections. Okay, so one Mississippi, two Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Mississippi to Mississippi. I think I'm probably using maybe a little bit too too little uh, solder. Yeah, that's probably a little bit better. circuit board's getting discolored as I uh, touch it with the, uh, the light. It's also difficult. Okay. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Oh shit. Okay. Well, what I'm seeing is that the solder is flowing to the other side of it. Yeah. Still haven't figured out how to fix it, that, how to prevent that from happening. I think the reason that may be applying that may be happening is because I'm pushing the solder onto the uh, metal bit itself. Alright, so let me use this solder wick to clear away some of this solder. I wonder how you're supposed to like get rid of you're supposed to cut it? Seems to work. Oh, 
Oh boy. Oh boy. This is going to turn into my first uh, <laughs> disaster project. So I've now got two of these leads touching each other. So I'm going to have to fix that. I want this. OK. OK, so we got that fixed. Oh, wow. And also this uh, desoldering wire is getting kind of hot. So I've got this end cleaned up. How about the other end? Other end still looks pretty good. So that's crisis averted. Right, let's keep going. So now I'm going to try to apply this more to this circular metal bit instead of applying it to the uh, metal, I don't know to call that thing. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So that's half of it. Now the other half.
Okay. Well, with these uh, joints, soldering joints, so close together, I can understand how a piece of equipment could go bad just from having two metal bits touching each other that are not supposed to be. Okay, so it looks like everything is good. All right. So that is the. Uh, oh, so when I look at the other side, I can see that quite a bit of solder ended up on the uh, legs of the uh, at mega. Whatever. So let's switch back to the instructions. See what's next. Okay. Next page: buzzer and switches. Locate the buzzer and slide switches. Ah, so that's what that thing is. I was wondering what that thing was. Locate the positions on the printed circuit board. Power, sound, buzzer. Place your components in the printed circuit board. Flip it over and solder them into place. When you're done, your printed circuit board should look like this. Okay. Let's switch back. So here's the buzzer, and these are, oh, okay, I didn't see that before, but these are just two switches. I didn't see the uh, switch on them. Okay, so let's pop out the printed circuit, the uh, buzzer first. So I'm assuming that the buzzer is not, doesn't have a polarity. You can put it in either way. It does. It has a plus sign on one of them. Hmm. Let me see if the instructions say anything. Okay, well, I'm just going to copy the way they have it laid out here, which is with the plus sign going down. I'm a bit surprised that, well, I don't know, maybe it doesn't make a difference. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do it the way they did it, but it may not make a difference whether it's up or down. So bend the legs on the other side. Oh, I never clipped. Well, I think I'll just leave the uh, legs for the Admega. Okay, so let's do this one. Oh, so the buzzer makes noise when I apply the heat to it. And in fact, it makes noise even if the buzzer doesn't touch it. Interesting. It makes noise even if the buzzer isn't touching it. I wonder why. Maybe it's an electrical field or something. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Yeah, it looks good to me. do them for switches, and then I'll clip everything at the same time. So first switch goes here. Oh, that fits in there pretty tight. Okay, so let's...
Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Oh shit. Is that even? Yeah, that looks on. That looks even to me. Now it's a little bit bent. Well, that is why. Okay. Alright, I've got it mostly straightened out. Yeah, got it totally straightened out. So all I did was just apply some force with my finger while I held the, the soldering iron up to the joints and it bent back into a straight position. So these are the little tricks that I like picking up from these simple projects. So the project itself may not seem very impressive you know, when it's finished, but you pick up all these little tricks that you can then apply to more complicated projects. Right now for the other switch, Sound. Okay, so this time I'm going to bend the legs in such a way that shouldn't need to uh, do what I just did again. It should stay more or less even. Good to me. All right, so those are those three. Now I'll just clip off the excess. Like that. Like that. Like this. Like this. Like this. Like this, like this, like this. All right, that's done. You know, all this garbage. It's good to have a trash can close by. This soldering wick should probably also be rid of. Alright, let's read the next step. So now. Light up buttons. Locate the four LED tactile buttons. These buttons are polarized. Notice the small plus sign on the top side of the white plastic leg. Locate the four positions on the printed circuit board. Note the polarity markings on the printed circuit board. Make sure the plus sign on the button aligns with the plus marking on the PCB. Solder them into place. When you're done, your board should look like this. All right, let's do that. I think I'm almost done. Oh, maybe not. I still have a couple other things. Sorry. Another plastic bag. All right. Let's just do these one at a time, I guess. Okay, there's the plus sign. First, hmm, lights are bent a little bit. Hmm. 
seems to me that these things don't exactly fit into... There we go. These don't seem to fit quite as uh, neatly into the... Uh, whatever. I'm actually not even touching the uh, solder. I'm just holding the button in place, heating up the uh, joint, and then it gets to the point where you just kind of like lightly push, and the solder will feed directly into the... Uh, and at this point, the button's held in place well enough that I can set it down and handle the solder directly. Oops. into the wrong hole. That's not good. Uh, how am I going to fix this? Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Hmm, what am I going to do? I'm going to do Oh, the button got hot. The button got hot. All right, so that button's going to stay there. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solder the button where it is, and I'm just going to bridge that gap. Oh, so it's a bit messy, but hopefully that'll work. Oh man, I'm really fucking this up right now. Okay, I think I got it working. <laughs> it's ugly. It's really ugly. But I think it's gonna work. I'm hoping it's gonna work. And if it doesn't work, I know where to look. Oh, I know what I can do. I can use uh. Will this get rid of all of it? Fuck it. I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Gotta learn to not be such a perfectionist. As long as it works, that's all that matters. So, 
the next one, I'm not going to mistake where the button is supposed to go. Plus goes up. Plus goes up. That one goes there. Yeah, it's tricky because they have those two holes right next to each other. It's not exactly clear. If you're not paying attention, it can be easy to not understand which plug goes in what hole. Okay, that's not right. Well, this is turning out to be the most difficult component I've ever had to uh, set in. There we go. Oh, that fits nicely. Well, once you get it in there, it fits very nicely. In fact, it fits so nicely it's making the other one look horrible. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see what. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, it'll be a good practice at troubleshooting electronics. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. It looks pretty good. I think I'm still feeding in maybe a little bit too much solder. I'm still getting solder on the other end of these components. Alright, so that is a really all the connections on that one. Next one. Okay, I think I have it. Yep, there we go. It's not snapped in nicely. Hmm. 
¿no? in. Yeah, these metal bits are designed so that they just kind of snap into place once you get them aligned correctly. Are all the buttons. And did they say anything else? No, I think that was it for this. This was just the buttons. Alright, so let's switch back. Next page, seven segment displays. Locate the two seg seven segment displays. These displays are polarized. Notice the decimal points below the digits. Locate the two positions on the PCB. Note the polarity markings on the PCB. Make sure the decimal dots on the displays are aligned with the decimal markings on the PCB. Solder into place. When you are done, your board should look like this. And once we do that, I think once we do that, we'll be close. Don't know what these things do. Oh, maybe these are to hold the batteries. Didn't think about that. I see how this works. Okay. All right, so let's do the uh, seven seven displays first. Just stick this in here. Pretty easy. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's just like a bit of uh, foam.
pretty decent to me. Okay, so that's both sides. Let's do that one. I feel like I'm just playing connect the dots here. It's just like pretty straightforward putting these things in. So those just clip off the excess. And I'll just do it one at a time to be safe. Good. Clean up this extra bit. Oh, whoops. I forgot to turn off the uh that's Things. All right, well, let's put in the uh, seven segment displays. Next step, battery clips. I think these are the last things I may need to solder. Don't know what these plastic things are for. Hmm. Where might the plastic things go? Maybe into the battery clips? Okay, locate the four battery clips. Locate the four positions on the PCB. Note, these parts are polarized and must be soldered in so the back sides are facing out. If placed incorrectly, the batteries will not fit. Ensure they are flush and that the back sides are facing out. Solder into place. When you are done, your board should look like this. Right. See what he means by the back sides should face out. What does that mean? Take this one out. This one. Out. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So this what that's what they mean by the back sides facing out. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. fit pretty nicely. Just put them all in. 
they kind of snap in there. I think it might still work if you put it in upside down. Okay, so I'll just flip it over and do these. I think this is the last thing I may need to solder. So that's soldered in. Let's do the other one. Good. Last two. a while to heat it up. I think it's probably because the uh, battery clip, the whole battery clip is heating up. That is probably what's happening. And the buzzer is making a noise again. Pretty well soldered. Whoa, it's hot. Yeah, so the whole battery clip is getting hot. That's why it takes longer to solder that bit. Okay. 
get this thing off. All right. That's everything. Let's look at the next pit. Next page. Standoffs. Locate the four plastic standoffs and four metal screws. Note. You do not need a screwdriver to place these into the PCBs. Hand tightening should suffice. Ah, oh, did I forget again to uh, get rid of the... Uh... That's annoying. With the standoffs installed, your binary blaster should fit should rest flat on the table. Oh, I see how it works. Okay. Well, I'm annoyed that I forgot to do that. Alright, let's do this one at a time. I'm going to take, take them all out. There we go. So, I guess I'll just... Pick one. Oh, I see what you do. You, you put in the screw, and then you twist the standoff onto it. Well, that's pretty clever. Screwdriver. There's no reason not to. Uh, where am I? One of these is a. Here we go. It's gonna fit there. Yes. No. Okay, so this screwdriver doesn't fit that. Good thing that I have a whole bunch of them. This one might fit. Let's take a look. Yes, it does. There we go. So that's tight. Next one. This one. Oh yeah, screwdriver is real helpful. The standoffs installed, your binary blaster should rest flat on the table. And it does. Next page, batteries. Locate the two AA batteries. These are polarized, so make sure to align the plus and minus signs correctly. Place the batteries into the clips and turn it on to check that they are in correctly. 
you should see the LED tactile buttons light up to show you that the batteries are plugged in correctly and your binary blaster is powering up. All right, let's take a look. First, I put the screwdriver away. Okay, so there's a minus and a plus on the PCB. It tells you where which direction it goes in. Plus minus plus minus. Oh fancy, fancy. So it's showing the binary for all of these different uh, numbers. So this is decimal on the top and then binary on the bottom. Very cool. Those lights are pretty brilliant. Very bright. Okay, so let's take a look at the directions and see how to play this thing. Next page, how to play the game. How to play the game. First, turn on your binary blaster. The power slide switch is located on the top left side of the PCB. Oh, okay. I just had it set to on by default. Slide it to the on position to, to the left. You may also want to check the sound switch. You can slide this to either the left or the right. Right now it's on. Uh, depending on if you would like to play with sound or not. If nothing happens, it may be that your batteries are placed incorrectly. Please make, please make sure to double check the polarity. When you first power up your binary blaster, you should notice that the buttons light up quickly from right to left, and then the display begins blinking a circular pattern. These blinks are part of a, a boot-up in order to ensure that the LEDs and displays are working properly. While the displays are blinking the circular pattern, your binary blaster is ready to begin a new game. To begin a new game, simply press one of the buttons. Okay. The display will now show you your first value. Note, this can be different every time. You must now press the binary equivalent of the four but on the four buttons. Here's a chart to get you started. Okay. I get it. Okay, so let's let's try it out. So I'm going to press a button. Nine. So I believe it's that. Eleven. Seven. So this is four. Three, five, five. This is four, so five would be five is that one eight twelve. It'd be eight and four, so nine would be this, ten would be this. 7 would be 8 minus 1, which would be 4 would be this, 2 would be this, 13 would be 8 and 5, which would be this, 1 would be this, 11 would be 8 and 3, which would be this, 6 would be 8 minus, or 4 plus 2, which would be this, 3 would be 4 minus 2, 14 would be, oh god, 5 would be, man, this is hard, 15 would be, oh man, ah, okay, 15 is all four lights, okay, I get it, so now,
So I'll just keep reading here. If you do not press the correct value within a few seconds, the binary blast will time out. And this effectively means you have lost this round. Start another, simply press any button. When you press the correct binary equivalent, you will then move on to the next random value. There are 15 total. Once you convert all 15 without timing out, you have won. Each time you begin a new game, the order will be different. It does this to help encourage learning conversion rather than muscle memory of a pattern. Also, when you have completed all 15 possibilities, the display will show you your score. This is the amount of seconds it took you to complete the game. As you practice your conversions, you should be able to get this number lower and lower. Good luck. When you have mastered the default playing mode, decimal conversion, you may like to challenge yourself to convert from hexadecimal notation to binary. In hexadecimal mode, your binary blaster will display the values 10 to 15 in hexadecimal. Note the lower values, 1 through 9, will still be shown as decimal values because these are the same in both value notations. So to play in hexadecimal mode, follow these three steps. Turn your binary blaster off. Press and hold the bit 0 button. While continuing to hold the bit 0 button, turn your binary blaster back on again. You should see the display show A, B, C, D, E, F. You are now in hexadecimal mode. To go back to default decimal mode, simply cycle power without any buttons pressed. All right, well, I get it. So, oops. So, there, yeah, I'm done. I did this project mainly. I, not necess I didn't do this to learn that, but to, uh, I didn't do this project to learn more about binary. I already know a good amount about binary, or I know enough about it. Um, I did this mainly to get practice soldering. And I think for that, it was a success. So very cool. Uh, let's turn it off. And yeah, it works. All right, so that's that for today. So now I'm just going to clean up. So I'll put this away. Put the solder away. Put the solder wick away. Put the, unplug the soldering iron. And I'm going to go wash the sponge, Put throw this out, put this away, and that's that. So uh, I guess I'll put, should I un take out the batteries? Um, should I take out the batteries or not? I will, just so they don't drain. I've heard it's good practice to take out the batteries. And I'm going to put this away. Alright, that's that. Whoops.